A up and uh, welcome to Hunstanton Beach uh, and we're at uh, groin number 14 and we're at number 14 for a very good reason because today is the 14th of February uh, it's my birthday and it's also Valentine's Day so I thought to bring Helen along for a romantic photography day on uh, on this beach we've come to these groins we've currently got the tide coming in the sun's a little bit bright, so that's not ideal. Um, but we'll just have to set the photography to match the uh, conditions we have. So we're going to have to manage this uh, light here. I want some long exposures. The sea's a little bit calm. It's not particularly rough. So uh, yeah, I'm thinking black and white because what you tend to get, we've got nice colours got nice greens and browns on the groins but when you do long exposure on the sea it goes a horrible muddy brown so uh, I'll show you the two the two shots I'll show you color and uh, black and white later the plan is to go down the other end of the beach where I'm going to show you uh, my favorite part it really is uh, amazing down that end of the beach uh, and we're going to follow the tide out so the tides coming in high tides 11 o'clock so uh, when the tide is high, we're going to go and get something to eat and then go down that end of the beach. And uh, yeah, that, that's amazing down there. Can't wait to get down there. OK, the great thing about the tide moving in is that you can keep moving back quite safely uh, to take your shots. And I'm just going to take another shot. And at the moment, I've got the 10 stop on and that's given me uh, F11 ISO 64 25 seconds exposure and uh, just going to move a little bit back because I don't want the tripod to be sinking in. Pretty nippy this morning it's about two degrees on this beach it was freezing driving across there was mist and fog which was fantastic and I was tempted to stop but uh, I wanted to get here just as this tide came in. I knew the tide was going to come in uh, at this time and it is coming in. It's probably, uh, it's come in since we've been here, it's come in about three groin sections. Well, after that first part of the shoot, uh, I wasn't really feeling it actually for some reason. I don't know whether it was the, it was probably the three hour drive I've had and uh, lots of queuing traffic in fog and mist it wasn't uh, it wasn't a nice one so at that point of uh, photographing the groins yeah i wasn't really on a on, on any kind of high here's the shots and as i thought black and white uh, did come out better than color but um yeah they were just okay shots nothing special um it was a bit of a warm-up, let's say, um, to the day ahead. Now, we did come here in 2016, and we wanted to recapture the subjects that we photographed then. So the groins were the first subject, and uh, the other subjects are at the other end of the beach, and the other part of the beach is fantastic. You've got rocks, that look like dinosaur eggs, that's what I call them. And you've got the uh, coloured cliffs that look like a corned beef sandwich. Uh, amazing down that end of the beach. So the plan was we we're gonna go and get breakfast. We we're gonna have a birthday stroke Valentine breakfast. Then um, follow the tide out. High tide was 11 o'clock. So we wanted to try and follow the tide out and see uh, what kind of compositions we could get. So we toddled off for breakfast and uh, had a good breakfast, cappuccino, very nice. And uh, then we went back out into the outside world and walked into this.
So, what's going off here? The weather app didn't mention um, sea fog. That's, that's what it appeared to be, sea fog. It didn't mention that John Carpenter was going to reshoot the film The Fog on this day, because that's what it also looked like and felt like. And it went really cold as well. The fog sent the temperature back down to minus two. So it was freezing. And uh, the question was, what are we going to do now? And uh, obviously in the video, I, I mentioned I missed an opportunity. And I did, because I should have here took a shot of that groin there. Long exposure, nice minimal shot, smooth water. That would have been uh, fantastic but I missed that opportunity. And instead, we went uh, off up to uh, Hunstanton Lighthouse to get uh, a misty lighthouse shot. Well, as you can see, the uh, we've got this bank of sea fog stroke mist that's come in, and that's uh, made the temperature go to minus two, which is freezing. But we've decided to take advantage of the change in the weather, and we've come down to Hunstanton Lighthouse to get a shot and um, the sun keeps poking back through the, uh, the sea mist, we'll call it sea mist, and uh, I've got a shot of the lighthouse. It's a vertical shot and I'm hoping that that sun's going to break through and light up the side of the lighthouse with the uh, mist in the background. That's what I'm hoping for. But what a change in conditions, I cannot believe it. We've gone from 10 degrees sunshine to minus two sea fog and mist. Anyway, let me show you what I'm looking at. So we've got a straightforward shot of the lighthouse um, surrounded by mist. Uh, this will definitely be a black and white shot uh, for sure. And um, as I said, I'm just hoping that light's gonna come and light up the side. So after waiting a little while, the sun didn't fully burst through. I did get this shot um, with a little bit of light on the side, but mm, it's a little bit dull image really, it's okay. I think black and white, again, uh, suits the image. So, uh, we then went down um, to the beach to see uh, how far that tide had gone out. And the next subject uh, to photograph was going to be the, uh, the shipwreck Sheraton. So this is what we captured of the Sheraton shipwreck.
Now, whilst I was filming the B-roll there, we started to get technical issues. So the drone all of a sudden went into auto land mode, which was like, no, cancel, cancel, cancelled it, went up, carried on a little more, and then it went into auto land mode again. And it was just going to land actually straight on the wreck. So then we'd have had two wrecks. So cancelled it again, sent it back up, brought it across to where I was standing, and then uh, I caught it in my hand. And I think it was something to do with the sensors actually and the fog. Uh, drone and fog don't like each other but also when I caught it it was absolutely wet through there was loads of moisture in the fog and it had all collected on the drone so there was no more drone flying on this day this needed to dry out uh, the second technical issue I had was with me uh, pocket Osmo I started to do some uh, video with the Osmo and that also said I'm shutting down I've had enough and that was also covered in uh, in moisture so everything was collecting moisture cameras tripod uh, thank God uh, for the Nikon D850 that uh, you know that basically said I'm okay here just keep pressing the shutter I'm fine in these conditions and it was that just carried on uh, taking shots what I did then was I looked at the other subject on the beach. I wasn't going to get the cliffs because they were shrouded in mist, but I could see the uh, dinosaur eggs. So then I moved down the beach, taking different uh, compositions of the dinosaur eggs. Okay, I just wanted to talk about YouTube for a moment and um, I watch an awful lot of different um, YouTube channels which I'm subscribed to because it's free and it's great to watch variety because you see in many different ways of working, filming b-roll, photography, tips that you can sometimes get and great personalities uh, out there on YouTube as well. If we take, go back there to Photo Tripper, um, top photographer, entertainer, comedian, but he's in Canada. And I'm unlikely to get to Canada in reality, but I still watch his channel. So I prefer channels that are more local to me where possible. And I class Scotland as local, I class Wales as local. And really local to me uh, is the Peak District. So I live in Nottingham. I'm on the border with Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire and uh, the Peak District is what half an hour away. So I do like watching channels like this one, um, Eddie Skelson, because he's got a, a big passion for the Peak District and that comes across in his videos and he gives you a very down-to-earth view point. So uh, yeah, Peak District, Eddie Skelson. I then got to the end of where all the dinosaur eggs were and uh, at this point you can walk and join the path back to the car park. And I turned around and I could see the sun trying to burst through the mist and I thought well, we was here earlier weren't we at the lighthouse, is it going to come through? And uh, I looked at the light on, on the rocks 
on the dinosaur eggs and I thought great took this shot got this shot really nice and then I turned around and looked at the cliffs and this was happening so the mist was starting to clear and uncovering uh, that uh, corned beef sandwich of the cliffs and the rocks and the beach and uh, craziness total craziness this what was happening with the weather conditions so what they did now was I took a series of shots on this part of the beach I could have moved back to where I'd been but I thought no time wise we're about an hour away from sunset so I decided to work this area started off on tripod but then took the camera off the tripod and went handheld and the reason for this was I was able to get quite low down quickly and get the camera at the right height to bring the reflection into the rock pools of the cliffs and if I'd done that on tripod uh, I'd have been very restricted so handheld worked very well here for me and I got these shots of the reflections and I also got shots close-ups of the sand as well so the sand patterns worked very well in these particular shots and um, let's have a quick quick look at the the compositions I got conditions changed to this and you can see the light and the colours on the cliffs were starting to fade away as the sun began to dip down. So I turned the camera around back onto the tripod and I thought you know there's this half decent sunset here somewhere so decided to take the sunset and got this shot first because I like the, the patterns in the sand and then I refined this further and got some dinosaur eggs in the foreground. Patterns in the sand just behind and then the sunset in the distance and I really like that shot. I also uh, a bit later on did a vertical shot as well and looking at the sky there was potential here for when the sun went down for that sky to, to light up and get some great colours. So that was the next plan let's stay vertical maybe go lower down tilt the camera up so we get more sky in for that color that was the plan five minutes later five minutes later this happened <laughs>
never had so much craziness in one day and uh, I really wanted the uh, sky to light up that would have been the icing on the birthday cake but it didn't happen that mist and fog rolled back in yet again and that was the end of the shoot so here's some tips if you're going to go to this location if we take the the boat rack great subject but we need to get there as the tides going out because you'd get the the water washing around the wreck nice long exposure um, there for that after that you'd be able to take the rocks if we go back to this picture of the rocks you can see the channels there you can imagine the water running through the channels and yet again another uh, long exposure and third tip are we on three yeah third tip is to use the the rock pools there for the reflections they do go quite a distance down the beach if you go further down the beach you do get the lighthouse as well um, this is a previous shot you get the lighthouse in the composition as well and that reflects in the pools oh, crazy day I'm still recovering as well so we'll end the video there uh, thank you very much for watching uh, I think you've got to watch the video to the end to appreciate the the total craziness that uh, this day was so um, yeah if you like the video give it a like if you're not a subscriber to the channel consider subscribing to the channel share the video if you know somebody that might also appreciate uh, this particular content and uh, and I'll see you later mm -hmm.